Hey everybody, what's going on? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith, talking to a New York native. It's Frank Grillo, boss level, coming to Hulu. What's up, man? How are you? How you doing, brother? New York. I miss New York. Me too, man. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, I go from being in there every single day for work to now having, having been there for a year. It's wild, right? It's crazy. I know. I was there a year ago. That's the world we live in right now. Were you doing billions at that point or was it something else? Yeah, you know, I was doing billions and, yeah. they, and they closed everything down and threw me out of the hotel. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I guess I have to go home now. I guess I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, the Bowery Hotel, it closed down like the day I left. That must have been the first time that happened to you, right? That, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I've never heard of something. I mean, it's not the first time I've been thrown out of a hotel, but it's <laughs> the first time the hotel's been closed. <laughs> so you've had this really incredible journey when it comes to your acting career and, and Boss Level looks really cool, man. And I know that you were involved in the production of it. You're starring yeah. in it. It's the throwback to the whole 80s adventure action thriller. So what was it like putting this thing together? You know, Joe Carnahan and I, who uh, my, was my partner and wrote and directed it, we tr we've been trying for 10 years to get it up. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're not like a giant movie star and, you know, a lot of people, you know, didn't know who I was. Uh, it's a real difficult journey. It's a real difficult, difficult task to separate people from their money. Uh, but but we we always knew that we'd come back to it. And uh, after we did Wheelman for Netflix, we, we kind of got some momentum and we got the script and uh, Joe played with it a bit. And and here we are. I'm talking to you. It's it's uh, it's not been easy. Uh, the film was originally slated for 43 days and we, we had to shoot it in 27. Wow. Yeah. So the film has fought us back from the time we started this until until right now. <laughs> yeah, you just talk about all the real stuff in the industry we don't talk enough about, right? The number of days for production, securing financing, finding the right home for it. I mean, what yeah. are the biggest challenges when you think about the whole journey of this film here? You know, I mean, the biggest challenge is we're not having enough time. And uh, obviously the money is always a challenge in independent films. And then, uh, you know, finding a distributor that understood the movie and that could get us out there. And then COVID came. So that went out the window. And then we knew we had a good movie, a fun movie. And, you know, I think the silver lining with the whole COVID of it all was that we, we, we connected with Hulu. Mm -hmm. And I think a year into COVID, I think people are looking for kind of goofy escapism. You know, it's not really a time I want to be watching anything too serious. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, the movie gods were looking out for us after all. Yeah, it's funny how it all comes together. And I was checking out some of the footage you had on your Instagram page. We get a little fighting scene with you and Mel Gibson. What was it yeah. like being able to shoot that, man? You know, look, for me, Mel is is uh, is this, is an icon, obviously, to all of us. And, and uh, you know, I grew up watching uh, watching his movies. And, and then I had, this, <laughs> I had this great fight. We become friends. And I had this great fight scene. And I, I never got it out of my head that it was Mel Gibson. <laughs> and, and uh you know, I said to Mel, you know, uh, when you swing your elbow, be careful. Uh, I'm going to be here. But just swing, uh, you know, past my chin. And then the first take, big, giant Popeye elbow he knocks my jaw outside. Oh my I had to get God. a doctor. A doctor had to come in and relocate my jaw. So, you know, I got, uh, I got knocked out by Mel Gibson. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty uh, well accustomed to being in the whole fighting world. I mean, that, yeah. getting a, a blow from Mel Gibson may not be too different from, you know, the other, well, thing, but, but doing it on that set was probably not something you anticipated that moment. Well, I couldn't speak afterwards. So, and, and the funny thing was, I didn't want to upset Mel. So I just went over to Joe and go, I think we got a problem. Oh my, my jaw, God. my jaw. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we laugh about it now. <laughs> So the fact that this film is coming together is really awesome. What was the coolest part now that you finally did it? It's coming out after everything that you've been through with Joe. You know, I think the coolest part of the whole thing, I mean, it was a joyous, it was, a, I would never want to do it again. I mean, we got, we had PTSD after, you know, we were the producers of the film. Um, it was a joyous experience making the movie, but I think all in all, the fact that, we landed on our feet with this and we, we found great partners in Hulu and it all kind of turned out good mm. to me is the, is the, uh, I don't know, it, it, in my life that normally doesn't happen. So it's like, wow, oh, you know, the juice was, the, the juice is worth the squeeze. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's finally something good worked out. So what usually does happen in your life? It just goes a different direction. It goes the other way. Yeah. If I buy a stock, you should sell the stock. If I buy art, 
you should forget about the artist. Just run you know? the other way. I got Go you. the other way. <laughs> You also hit on uh, with talking about Netflix and Hulu, just just navigating the space at this point, right? Like the last ten years of streaming has been really nuts. So, what have you and your other folks learned just about trying to get stuff made, and also just trying to find the right home for something in today's streaming world? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. Look, the world is different. Uh, the world of, of film making is different. Uh, you know what what was run run by you know, the, the giant, uh, you know, AMCs of the world and, and where your life depended on the opening weekend numbers, it's all gone, right? And so the streamers that were, you know, kind of the enemy to the film world in the beginning has become the savior. And I don't think it's ever going to go, I don't know where it's going to, how it's going to balance out eventually, but, you know, thank God for the streamers because I think they've saved the film business. And now you have a lot of places to go you know, from Hulu to Netflix to Disney, HBO Max to Disney, there's a lot of places for filmmakers to, uh, you know, to sell their wares. And if it wasn't, if, they, if the streamers did not exist, I, I think the film business would have collapsed. Yeah, you know, it's funny because so many people fight what you just said, right? Where it's like they're so used to building up the whole movie theater industry that they hate yeah. to pump up the streaming industry and even like everything that's happened with HBO Max and films coming out, but like we need streaming in order to get stuff out there because imagine if there was no streaming, all these movies would have just been sitting there for over a year. I know, and, and even a movie like Boss Level, you know, uh, I, I'm not, you know, The Rock. So the chances, there were chances that the movie comes and goes in a weekend, sure. you know, and then yeah. we have to wait for it to be on pay-per-view. And mm -hmm. But here we're guaranteed an audience, we're right. guaranteed eyes on the, on the screen. And, you know, I don't know about you, but most of my friends have like 70 inch televisions with, you know, Sono sound bars. Yep. So you do get the, it's not on the 30 foot screen, but you do get the cinema experience pretty much these days. And, uh, you know, we're, we're ex Joe Carnahan and I are really excited that, that uh, you know, Hulu became our partners on this. I think we got a good shot at getting a lot more people to see it than normally would have. Yeah, you're just guaranteed the millions of subscribers that the service has, right? And like even this week, for example, like theaters in New York are reopening, right? We don't know how many people are going to even be at the theaters, right? I'm not I mean, going. No, I'm, not, I'm going. not going either, right? <laughs> exactly. So it's it's something that will always be there, but there's just other options. Just like you can go to a sporting event, but you can also watch it on TV. You can just have both. I know. You look, I remember. I'm so old. I remember being in Blockbuster renting yep. videos. And then like a week later, this Netflix thing was happening. And then like three weeks later, Blockbuster closed. Yeah. And I was like, what, what, wait, what? It's crazy. What? How am I going to watch movies? What do you mean? <laughs> What's, what do you mean digitally? We're streaming, you know, and then now it's part of our, our, our vernacular. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we do. It's how we watch content. So we all adapt. Yeah. You, I mean, you, look, you still make the films as if it was a theatrical release. And, uh, and then you go and see, you know, what the best, the, the best place to, to put it is. Exactly. Got a little bit of everything. And I think the cool thing about your career is that you've done TV, you've done film. Billions has been a big part of the recent stuff. So, I mean, you got some artwork in the back there. You're playing Tanner. Yeah, what, I painted that. that? Listen, I, I painted that myself. That's you? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the whole experience been like so far? Uh, with what? With, with, with Billions. Oh, Billions was fun. Yeah, you know, I... I uh, it was a chance for me to get back to New York to hang out with some friends. You know, I would go in and shoot an episode for a couple of days and stay at a cool hotel and would work with great people and fly out. And I didn't realize how popular Billions was. I, I, I mean, I had no idea. I had no idea. And to a whole new audience of people who normally maybe wouldn't even watch the stuff I do. So it's been great, man. It's been, I got one more to do. I think I'm going back at the end of March to do another one. So when did you first realize just how popular the show is? When the first episode aired. I mean, it was crazy. It's really popular in the industry. Hmm. So uh, look, I'm so dumb. You know, you never know. You just never know. I should pay attention more. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Sometimes you think something's going to be huge and then it's not big. And then all of a sudden, most, here you go. Most right? of the time. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. You mentioned New York and obviously you love going back. What are some of your favorite memories in terms of growing up, going to NYU and, and just being in the Big Apple, man? You know, I mean, New York is to me, you know, it remains the greatest city in the world. Uh, it, it, New York is singular in, uh, in, in the type of metropolis that it is and, and what it has to offer. I, 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 New York was the best place to grow up in the 90s. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot different than it is now. 
uh, you know, it's just everything. You're, you're just saturated with different cultures and, and uh, different ideas and everything's possible. And I just, yeah, I'm sad that I don't live there anymore. I can't really live in New York anymore because of my kids. And, but I'm sad that I'm not there. Uh, you know, I miss it constantly. Well, I mean, for a Yankee fan like yourself, you had a great run in the 90s. I don't know if you know this, man. I haven't won since 2009, so something's you know going to change at some point, right? Hey, and if I didn't know it, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> it's all right. I'm a Mets fan, so I'm still waiting from 86. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're also big into the whole uh, fighting world, MMA. What's it been like to immerse yourself in that? And I know you had the show on Netflix. My, my buddy from work was telling me about it. Like, you got to go all over the world and see all these different fighters. So what was the coolest part of that experience? Yeah, I mean, the, cool, the coolest part was I took my oldest son with me. So we traveled all over the world together. So it was a beautiful kind of bonding experience for me and my boy. But uh, I've always been fascinated with, you know, not just the fight uh, sports, but, but uh, the, the culture of fighting and what drives people to want to get in a ring or on a mat or in a cage. And, and uh, so that was my fascination. I also just loved Anthony Bourdain mm. and the travel aspect of it all. And it was kind of an homage to how much I loved, uh, you know, watching his show uh, and Netflix, you know, allowed me to go around the world and do this. So it was, it was fun. It was a great thing. Did you ever get to meet Tony? I have met him a couple times, yeah. And the interesting was thing was he got really into jujitsu later on in his life, and uh, we were gonna pitch we were gonna pitch him uh, to do a dual episode. Oh, that would have been uh, in Brazil, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, passed, and uh, which was very sad. But uh, I remain a huge Anthony Bourdain fan. I think what he did was amazing. Yeah, no question about it. In terms of your level of skills when it comes to fighting, is there anybody else in Hollywood who's in your in your range on your level? Can you think oh, of any, anybody off the top of your head that is? I'm sure. I, I don't. Nobody that I, I I don't know. I mean, look, I you know I don't want to fight The Rock. He's gigantic. Right. <laughs> but uh, you know, look, I just came from boxing, and I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm a lifelong uh, you know practitioner of martial arts and boxing and. So I don't, I don't, there might be, I, you know, uh, I haven't met him yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get you another fight movie at some point, right? I know we're working on it. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Well, Frank, really nice to meet you, man. Congrats on all the success and looking forward to seeing this one. All right. Thanks brother. I appreciate it, DJ.